How good is Keontae George really? Eight guards taken before him in the 2023 NBA draft. Arguably only one of them, maybe two, have shown more promise. With elite averages in college and all Big 12 honors, why was Keontae George taken so low? Those who watched Keontae George will tell you he had no business falling as low as 16th overall in the NBA draft. And even if you are unfamiliar with his game, it doesn't take long to come to the same conclusion. So how good is Keontae really? Well, he's really good. George started playing high school basketball in Louisville, Texas when he was 15 years old. In his first season there, he averaged 21 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 steals per game. Even though he was just a ninth grader, George was named the district's offensive player of the year, a crazy achievement in a basketball-loving state like Texas. <laughs> Before long, he was being watched closely by the NBA, and Texas A&M University extended its first scholarship offer. George continued to ball as a sophomore, averaging 24 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 steals per game. He moved to the school of Louisville for his junior year and kept up his fast pace, scoring 25 points per game. In order to play his final year, George moved to Bradenton, Florida to attend IMG Academy, which had one of the best basketball programs in the whole entire country. He averaged an astonishing 18 points per game and made an amazing 41% of his three-point shots. He was the top-ranked student in IMG Academy's history by the end of the season. ESPN placed him as the sixth best recruit, ahead of players like Anthony Black, Kaysen Wallace, Grady Dick, Therese Walker, Jet Howard, and Brandon Miller, who would all later get drafted before him. Almost every big school in the country was very interested in him, but he chose to commit to Scott Drew at Baylor University. George had some really great moments as a rookie. He broke the school record for most games with 20 or more points in a season. In eight games, he made four or more three-pointers, and in seven games, he had five or more assists. All of this was done in the Big 12, praised as the best college basketball stage in the world. By the end of the season, he was scoring 15 points per game, which was more than any other rookie chosen before him, except for Brandon Miller. He had such a great season that the Big 12 named him Rookie of the Year and named him to the All Big 12 second team as a guard. So what happened? From the sounds of it, he should have been a top five pick. The answer is simple. He wasn't efficient. He was chucking up shots and he became a little careless when attempting passes against good defenders. His three point percent dropped from 41% in high school to just 34% in college. How about his play style? Well, when you watch George play, one thing that stands out is how well he handles the ball. He can get through tight spots and make plays with strong defense because he has a good handle. In a way that very few other young players can emulate, he sets the pace and finds open space. No bar intended. He's very smooth and full of confidence. In one-on-one -on -one situations, he doesn't always rely on his speed. Instead, he uses skill and IQ to beat players and stays calm to either find an open shot or pass the ball to an open man. For Keontae George, the game seems to move slowly, which is a key trait that will help him become a star in the league. He knows how to throw off defenders with fake balls and jab steps, which he then uses to find holes in their defense and score. He can make plays around the basket because he is strong, has a good vertical, and is patient. 16 point advantage for Baylor. Here's Keontae George driving. Now he's stepping into Mike Conley's shoes. It's not easy to fill the shoes of an experienced veteran like Mike Conley. For years, Conley was the Jazz's backcourt's heart and soul. He was known for being a calm leader and making big plays when they mattered. That being said, Keontae seemed like the perfect person for the job. He is very good at scoring, and his court sense and ability to get his teammates involved in plays is very good for a rookie. Fans of the Jazz haven't seen someone with as much potential as him since Deron Williams. Conley was more of a standard point guard, but George can play as a combo guard who can make his own shots and set others up. He has already shown signs of being a great playmaker too. The Jazz heavily use a 7 seconds or less strategy. The point guard is in the middle and running plays from a spaced floor. George did a great job with this. It's not a small task to ask a newbie to make big decisions. That ball deflected, good defense. Keontae George running, Euro step it, lay it 
when we examine other players who are just as prolific scorers with low rim attempts. Players like Kevin Herter, Sam Hauser, Trey Young, and Clay Thompson are superb shooters. Harden, Van Vliet, and Pritchard are pull-up shooters who can also be effective from the mid-range. George is somewhere in between, though he still needs to work on his consistency as a mid-range shot maker. Keontae is fantastic from the floater range. So, what should Jazz fans expect? It might not make sense because he has made less than 34% of his three-point shots last year, but all the other signs are great. Keontae is going to be a lethal offensive scorer for the Jazz, and it might happen sooner than we think. The Jazz coaches have already figured that out and didn't hold back anything. He did more than just shoot open catch and shoots. Off the catch, he was confidently taking deep threes. He was also very good at shooting trays off the move. He would stare into a player's soul, pull up, and make the shot. All year, defenses loved going under Keontae on screens. Based on his numbers, that is technically the right play, but that will not work as he gets more reps. If he doesn't make as many stupid shots, his three-point rate is bound to go up. But yes, there's a lot of room for improvement. To list off Keontae George's accomplishments, he was top five in assists and points by rookies, tied for the most threes ever by a rookie in a game with nine in the latter half of the season, a 2024 Rising Stars game participant, and the fourth rookie with a 30-point game. He had several 30-point games, in fact, but those are the highest of the highs when it comes to him. Despite ankle injuries and sickness, Keontae George played 75 of 82 games. He started 44 of those. To be fair, Utah were in a weird position. When Keontae started getting a good run as a starter, the franchise's season was practically over, in the sense that it could not make playoffs. The coaching staff obviously saw this as an opportunity to give Keontae a free license to do as he wills, even if that means chucking up some absolutely stupid shots. He averaged 27 minutes a night, shooting a poor 39%. He also averaged almost three rebounds over four assists and almost three turnovers while shooting 33.4% from three and almost 85% from the free throw line. As the season progressed, we saw more impressive performances from Keontae George, though there were still more negatives and positives. However, many guards have had terrible rookie seasons and bounced back, and we might be witnessing just that. To make a return to the playoffs, the Jazz need to focus on two things, chemistry and consistency. With so many young, talented players, it's essential they gel quickly. That's where George's role as the facilitator becomes even more critical. His ability to keep everyone involved will be the glue that holds this team together. On defense, George's determination and willingness to work hard will set the tone. Even though he's not known as a solid defender yet, he can become the energy man. There is no question that the Western Conference is tough, but the Jazz have what it takes to fight. And with Keontae George in the picture, they just need one more good draft outing, and they might finally be back in postseason contention. And that's it. If you like keeping up with basketball's young stars, then you'll love what we have in store for you. Join us next time as we look at another up-and-coming NBA wonder kid.